you ever get fucked, like super fucked up on like whatever it is, like any of those psychedelics and do stand up or do you always, no. are you like stone cold sober? God, no. I mean, not stone cold sober. I mean, I've definitely had a few drinks or been a little stoned sometimes and things. But the thing is like, so there's a show in Los Angeles and it's, just, it's it, there's been a lot of different area, uh, iterations <laughs> of the show in other places. Um, in Los Angeles, it was called Performing Under the Influence, PUI. Mm. And you do a set completely sober and then you go out back, you get fucked up on the drug of your choice and then you come back and you do another set. <laughs> and and so like, people, I did the that's show. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I did the show and people were like, oh my God, Alex, what fucking drug are you doing? I was like, I just have this joint. I'm just going to smoke this. They're like, you? And I was like, yeah, I respect drugs too much to perform comedy on them. And they were like, don't you respect comedy too much? I was like, I know what I said. And they're like, no, and that's, I do. I've talked to plenty of people who have like, I took acid and I went on stage. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to entertain you. When, when I'm I, on acid, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is my time. Right. Because I feel like, especially, dude, if I started, like, if I started having any negativity at all, all I want to do is go to myself, go by by myself for a little bit and just sit and let it do what it's doing to me and mm -hmm. just kind of like get myself through it. I don't want to be on stage in front of people who are laughing at me or right. like, even if it is like <clears throat> you could set yourself up for some, for some really bad shit. And I know people who've had great sets on acid and mushrooms and all, and Molly and all kinds. That's the, the one drug. If I was, if I was mm. ever forced to do it on drug, Molly. I would do it on Molly because yeah, Molly, seems good. because I'm not actually going to like, my head Another is still world, very yeah. much. I can talk to you just like I am right now. My body is just feeling, like a million fucking bucks and it's <laughs> yeah. just like flowing through me with all the happiness yeah. but I would be able to perform if I was on mushrooms and I just would lose myself <laughs> I don't want people staring at me that just seems so mm. uncomfortable <laughs> this may seem like a really stupid question but do you know Mitch Hedberg of course yeah he's like the one of the first comedians I ever listened to when I was really young yeah he seems like he was always stoned out of his mind when he was on doing sets. He was on a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, he died of an overdose and he was, I mean, he had a lot of demons and a lot of addictions, but yeah, yeah. he was, he would definitely get fucked up and do shows a lot. I mean, I know people who were very close to him. Do you really? And, yeah. I mean, Tom Rhodes, who I mentioned earlier, they were roommates for a long really? time. Yeah. Wow. And he, <laughs> You know, he had to watch Mitch, like, you know, go through, they, they used to, you know, piles of cocaine and things like that. And I'm not speaking out of place here because they have talked about, he's talked about this very openly on other things. Right. But like, yeah, they would, but people kind of knew, like, Mitch started to get into harder stuff and people were trying to pull him back. Like, you don't need that. And he was kind of in the place of like, well, you don't know what I need. You don't know this. And he really, you know he had bigger demons to face that were some <clears throat> that were probably not drug related and the drugs were not helping him mm -hmm. at some point. And that's, <clears throat> that's one trap that, well, I, I very, very, very seldom talk about this, but like I have, I have a half brother who died of an accidental overdose and we were, and he left behind two kids and a wife and it was a horrible situation for the family. And what did he overdose on? Uh, we think alcohol and pills. We okay. think he was he was he was he was taking like some kind of opiate mm -hmm. for pain, yeah. and we think <clears throat> he just drank too much one night. And you yeah. know, it was the it was the surprise phone call of your life that you never fucking God. see coming. Yeah. And one thing, because I looked at him and I thought about myself a lot because I you know people know me as a drug guy. My album that I put out in 2018 is called Hugs, Drugs, Pugs. I talk about <laughs> drugs like it's <laughs> what I do, but. Opiates, I don't, like I said, I don't do those type of drugs. I don't do those. And I wrote, when I went to Burning Man in 2018, I there's a place called The Temple at Burning Man, which is one of the effigies that they burn. It's this beautiful structure. And people go in there with letters to their loved ones that they've lost or people that are sick or their pictures of their pets are in there. People write letters to people that have, that have raped them and things. I mean, it is, it is so emotional to walk through the temple and read these things. And one of the things that I wrote in the temple was a message to my brother that said basically like, like, I'm so sorry that what happened to you happened to you, but you've taught me exactly what not to do mm -hmm. as a drug user. And because of that, I thank you for it. And you know, I'm standing in there just <clears throat> fucking bawling my eyes out as I write this with a Sharpie on a piece of wood. And people are just walking up and hugging you because they just read that that's what Burning Man is. People see you in distress and they'll just walk up and they'll put your hand on your shoulder and be like, you know, is this okay? And if, if you turn to them, they'll give you the fucking hug that you just, you. I've cried, you know, I had a woman 
cry into me about the death of her sister that same week too. She literally just like found, she just, she just needed somebody. And she just cried all over me for like an hour. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just sat there and let her do it. And just kind of like, you know, stroked her hair. And it was just like, I'm mm -hmm. all I can do is be here. Mm -hmm. And you just have to, you know, it's those moments teach you things. And <clears throat> I know, I know where I'm not going with this. My place is not to be a zombie walking around. My place is to be silly and lighthearted and fun and loving. Mm -hmm. And those drugs are not that at all. Yeah. You know? I didn't. I didn't see when I when I first started listening to him. I didn't know anything. I was like still in high school, and it was like the, my first introduction to comedy. And it just seemed like everything was a punchline. Everything was so everything. fucking funny. And he was just like, I could tell. Like this guy, I knew instantly. This guy's fucked Dude, up. I remember the first hmm. time I heard uh, an <clears throat> escalator can never be broken. It can only temporarily become stairs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the convenience. I was like, that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard. In my and the life. way he like draws out the word. Yeah. Is so convenience. fucking funny. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. He was a fucking. <sighs> He was a he was a prof a prophetic genius in the way that he wrote one liners because yeah. they weren't you understood who he was but he wasn't really giving an, up too much of himself yeah. it was very beautiful you I, know I love the ducks at Subway one oh, like, genius. I went to Subway I ordered a sandwich and it was for the ducks outside it's like oh don't worry man it's on the house <laughs> <laughs> there are five ducks out there and they all want sun chips <laughs> yeah <laughs> my favorite Hedberg joke is um people haunt their horn too much I think people should only be allowed to horn yeah. like three horns three times a month. That way, if somebody cuts you off and you go to press it and no sound comes out, you're like, "Damn it! I wish I hadn't seen Ricky on the sidewalk." <laughs> <laughs> that shit kills oh, I me. I fucking yeah. love that, dude. Yeah. Oh my god. That's like, you know a lot of greats are gone too soon, and it's unfortunate. But we have to learn from those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to look at a person like that and say. Well, what did he need that he wasn't getting? And how can, if we see a person that we think is falling into a trap like that, how can we help them? Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, maybe we can pull him out. Maybe we can't, but at least we have to give the effort. And I know a lot of his friends really fucking tried. And he was a person who he had too much going on inside him that wasn't going to let himself be pulled away. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, mm -hmm. and that sucks. And I think my brother was probably the same way, no matter what, even with his family and all that, it wasn't enough to truly pull him away mm -hmm. fuck could you imagine if podcasting was around when he was alive oh my god yeah <laughs> fuck crazy i would love yeah i would love to hear like him and a tell just go off for like just two for, hours yeah dude. right oh my god <laughs> i'd be just they'd be like the fastest joke session <laughs> yeah, yeah. of your life <laughs> be amazing oh man